Hey guys, welcome back. It is, well I know it's St. Paddy's Day, so that would make today what, the 17th I think? 16th, 17th? I think it's the 17th. 17th. Welcome back. And uh, this video has nothing to do with tractors. <laughs> but I told you guys a while back in the live stream and I've had quite a few people asking about what I use for camera equipment. So that's what vi this video is gonna be about. Just showing you guys uh, just what I use so for starters when I'm at shows I carry around everything in this backpack so if you see this backpack at a show chances are it's probably me so don't be afraid to say hi stop me and say hi and shake hands and whatever and shoot the breeze for a couple minutes and I'll probably be back off to filming or doing whatever else I get into at the shows but I, uh, I have no problem talking for half an hour, hour, whatever. It's all about talking to you guys and seeing what's up. So anyways, let's move on. I'm gonna flip the camera around here. All right guys, so the camera that I'm filming on is a GoPro Hero 6 Black. That's what I've been filming on for probably at least two years now. But when I first started my channel, I filmed, actually I filmed with a small handheld uh, digital camera. I don't even know what kind it was, but a girl that I was dating at the time let me use it. So, but when I finished filming with that, I upgraded to this GoPro. It's the Hero 2, and it was a good camera. Uh, I, I put a lot of miles on this camera, but uh, for whatever reason, the original battery failed, and every battery I've put in it since then, I can't keep a charge in it for more than... 10 seconds so uh, I ruled out that it was probably a camera issue and not an issue of the batteries themselves so this camera I still keep just in case I ever want to try and get working again but I've contacted GoPro about it there's nothing they can really do on it other than send it in they'll give me a like a small credit to buy a new camera but other than that this one's pretty much been out of commission this next GoPro was one that my wife bought me when my first GoPro kind of took a dump on me. This is the GoPro Hero Plus. Now this is kind of like the light version of a GoPro. It works really well. Uh, there aren't many features that you can really get on this camera like you can on other cameras. Like I said, it's kind of the light version and the camera itself is fixed in the case. You cannot remove the camera from the case. So I had a problem <clears throat> a couple years ago when the the prongs on the bottom for the mount broke off and I tried to contact GoPro to get a new case and they informed me that there's no way that they can send me a case because the camera comes with the case as a solid unit. Um, so that's what led me to get the GoPro Hero 6. But I did uh, I did put a like kind of super glued or gorilla glued a mount on the bottom that I cut apart from some of the other mounts that I'll show you in a second. But this one does still work. Uh, I use it in a pinch, but what really frustrated me was when I went to Andover, South Dakota to the James Valley Threshers reunion um, to see the unveiling of the 150 case. I had this camera rolling as the case, as the 150 pulled out of the shed it was stored in and for whatever reason it cut off and I didn't notice it until we were halfway around the grounds on the drive. So that led to me buying the GoPro Hero 6 Black. Um, it just, I wanted some reliability. So this one, although it served me well for probably three years or more, it was time to upgrade. So that's what gave me the GoPro Hero Black, or the Hero 6 Black. Now, moving on from there, I've got a lot of different mounts. I'll cover all of them, but I'll highlight the ones that I use the most. So this one here, this large strap system, is actually a chest mount. So I can strap that on my chest, and while I'm driving tractors or operating, excuse me, operating whatever equipment, 
I can have that chest mount on and put my GoPro right in the middle of my chest. Uh, it's nice uh, to keep things hands free. Sometimes I'll use it if I'm working on something on the workbench. But the only disadvantage to that if you're driving tractors is your hands and the steering wheel are kind of like the primary focus of where the camera's at. Moving on from there, I've got my head mount. This one is really good if you're in a situation where you're not looking around as much. If you're focused on one particular thing that's in front of you. And if you guys have watched my videos, I usually have to grab tools and nuts and bolts and all this other stuff. So wherever I turn my head, that's where the camera is going to look. So this one is nice if you're just going to be stationary talking and looking at one particular thing for an extended period of time. But other than that, I don't use it a whole lot. Now, I've got a whole bunch of different small mounts here. Uh, these are all 3M tape. I mean, they, you can apply them to a surface. Uh, these are all mounts that would go on a helmet or you know something that you're going to use it like riding ATVs or dirt bikes or snowmobiles, something like that. Uh, they have these little clips that slide in to these mounts and then the GoPro attaches to the clip itself. I've got a variety of those clips but they all kind of go hand in hand together here. And I have never used any of those. I really don't have a use for them right now. But I've got them just in case. I've also got these little extensions that can go between the camera and, whoops, sorry about that, between the camera and the clip. So if I ever wanted to, I could get the camera up a little bit higher. I can articulate it different ways. Uh, it just gives you a little bit more flexibility with how you can move the camera on a solid mount. I've also got this large suction cup mount. This works great for um, obviously large flat surfaces like a car hood or tractor hood. Um, you could mount it on a windshield I suppose. Uh, I wouldn't recommend, you know, it's probably not safe mounting stuff in your windshield, but you could use it for that. Um, inside the vehicle, you know, if you were driving you could use it inside the vehicle on the windshield. Um, I don't really use it a whole lot because I don't like sticking things like this on a painted surface, especially on the tractors because although it's just a tractor, I put a lot of pride into the stuff that I restore and I don't want to scratch the paint and any type of suction cup on a, on a dusty paint job just isn't really, isn't really great for anti-scratch. So, but this is, this is a really cool item and it's strong as heck. Like you really have to pull to get this thing off. Um, from there I have this magnetic mount. It's a rubber coated magnet and I use this 98% of the time when I'm filming in the garage because I can stick this literally anywhere on a piece of metal and it will not come off if you put it on like the whole piece, you know, something like that. So I usually put it on the whatever I'm sticking it to halfway. That way I can actually peel it off. But these things are really great. I've got two of them. Uh, this is the larger one. I've got a smaller one as well. But like I said, I use these 98% of the time when I'm filming in the garage. I've also got this little double mount. Uh, it mounts down into a, an actual mount and then you can mount a GoPro on one side and a microphone on the other. Or you can mount two GoPros side by side. Uh, if you flip one of the GoPros upside down, you can film in 3D, which back when, back when I don't know, GoPros were less, less advanced as they are now, um, and 3D was a more popular way to view things, it was probably a cool thing, but nowadays, I mean, 3D, the fad kind of faded away, so I, I got this mainly to, to mount the camera on one side and then a microphone on the other. Uh, just in case I needed to get into a situation where I had to take it off the top of the camera. So that's what this is for. I also have, in a pinch, I have this little cell phone mount that I can thread on to either down like this or up on the end. I can thread it onto uh, the tripods or something like that and it's expandable. Let's see if I can figure out here which way. So 
as you can see this expands up it's spring loaded so I can just clamp it around my phone and in, in a pinch I use my phone when I don't have my GoPro with me or if the GoPro dies and all my batteries are dead you know that way I've got something extra I can film with moving on from that since we mentioned tripods uh, I have this flexible tripod uh, I can wrap it around things these arms bend I've used this to wrap it around tree branches I've wrapped it around the frame on the loader for the farm all M um, it, it was really a versatile thing and I liked it except it's not very secure um, these you know articulating or movable legs they don't really there's no guarantee that it's gonna stay there and the older this thing gets these white rings they're like a rubber a rubber ring well they've become brittle and cracked and you know exposure to oil and grease and sunlight it, it just it didn't have much longevity and I think I paid like ten dollars for this off Amazon so what do you really expect for ten bucks but I mean I haven't used it in a long time but it still works I can still use it if I want to and you know it works great on the workbench because I can just set the camera there and angle it down to whatever I'm working on but I don't use it a whole lot like I said that magnet is primarily what I use then we have the larger telescoping tripod this one has telescoping legs uh, it has an adjustable top I can swivel it I can tilt it I can tilt it side to side so that one's really good if I'm out in the yard working doing stuff with the tractors or if I'm in the garage and I need a static stand that I want to use it works great so that's that's what I use those tripods for now as far as microphones go I would really love to get a wireless microphone like Hans over at Tractor Hoarders has but quite frankly they're pretty expensive and I just I don't have the money to invest in that right now <clears throat> but I did have I experimented with this smaller microphone first it's a directional microphone you can swivel it you can turn it obviously in the in the microphone jack you can turn it whatever direction you want uh, this is the Saramonic SR-XM1 uh, it worked pretty good but I don't think it quite had the sound quality that we were wanting so I, I chose to upgrade to the Saramonic V-Mic Mini which is this one here it is also a directional microphone but it's a little bit higher quality and that's the one I'm talking into right now and just for just for sound purposes I'm gonna switch mics and we'll see what kind of a sound comparison we get with the SRXM1 ceremonic microphone so let's do that okay so this is a sound test with the ceremonic SRXM1 microphone you guys tell me what you think which which microphone has better sound quality um, I think the the larger one the V-Mic Mini this one here I think this one has a little bit better sound quality but that's just me um, so let me know what you think uh, the larger one obviously uses more battery power than the smaller one so let me know what you think in sound quality and that's really all I got for microphones oh, oh one more thing this here this is called a dead cat this goes around the microphone you can see my thumb is inside it but this really cuts down on wind noise uh, makes it almost non-existent it will muffle the sound a little bit but for the most part it's not really noticeable so if you're gonna be filming with an external microphone on a GoPro make sure you get one of these because it's really gonna help in situations where there's a lot of wind um, you know when you go to shows out in farm fields there's really nothing to stop the wind so this is a cheap investment for good quality sound all right last but certainly not least I almost forgot uh, we do have one more segment after this but I almost forgot one of my best hacks for <clears throat> filming uh, a lot of people that have seen uh, my 150 video that I just released on the case 150 uh, the mashup of all the different clips a lot of people have said man I love the drone footage well 
I got something for you. I don't have a drone. I wish I did because I feel like I could do train. Uh, by the way, that big boy video, that was filmed right on the tracks over right by my house here. But um, I would love to have a drone, but for one thing, I'm not going to buy one that's cheap because you get what you pay for. And when I'm putting something up in the sky, <laughs> I don't want it to just fall out of the sky when uh, when I'm filming. So that's a lot of money to invest. And, you know, I look at mechanic work and you know filming and and everything like that kind of like I look at tattoo work and a lot of you guys have seen my tattoos but yeah okay we know the trains here but cheap work ain't good and good work ain't cheap so with that said this is my drone it's an extendable paint stick okay now I can I can extend up like right here I can get nearly to the peak of my roof, which is probably 12, 14. I mean, I'm almost six foot, so at least 15 feet, I can get up in the air, you know, if I hold it straight up, but it's an extendable paint stick. You can get it at any, any hardware store. And then I've got this little mount here. It's a, it's a round tube mount that you could use on like a bicycle handlebar or something like that or motorcycle handlebars. I just clamped it on the end and I'm actually going to cut this threaded portion off. Maybe, I don't know, maybe not because I can still use this for a paint stick. <laughs> but it kind of gets in the way sometimes when I got the camera at just the right angle. You can see just the tip of the, the threaded portion that would go into the end of a paint roller. But I just clamped the GoPro on that and I can film way up in the air. I can get down below things without bending over uh, like at shows. Uh, I can get up close and personal to all of the rotating components like on a steam engine or a threshing machine or what have you. I can, I can do all kinds of things with this you know, stick that I probably paid less than $10 for. So that's a little life hack to filming with a GoPro. Let's head downstairs and I'm going to show you the program I use to edit my videos. Okay, first things first. I got to apologize for my lack of technical knowledge, but this is the screen of my laptop and the program that I have is Sony Vegas Movie Studio Platinum. Uh, this is version 15. Uh, there are newer versions. I think they're up to like 18 now, but... Uh, this one works just fine for me. It's way more advanced than I'll ever figure out how to use. <laughs> but it's it's a pretty simple program to figure out once you start playing with it. I originally started um, video editing with Windows Movie Maker, but when Windows upgraded the system to, well, I think it started on Windows Vista. So whatever was after Vista, maybe Windows 7, I think it transferred to Windows 7, but anything after Windows 7, it, it was an obsolete program and wasn't supported. So I had to upgrade to this software, which was, I think at the time, it, it was about $100 for the software. Uh, works great. I don't have any complaints about it, other than it's way more, way more smart than I'll ever be. But at the bottom, these are all video clips. Every, every vertical line you see, every split, those are all video clips. They're all spliced together. Um, some areas up top have text in them. Um, the purple area down below, that's either sound or music. Uh, there's a separate line for music in here. If I scroll down, you can see here this line in blue, that's music. Um, it's really a, a, a neat program. Uh, there's a lot of video editing software out there. Um, Adobe makes some good stuff. Sony makes good stuff. Um, I, I don't really know any others off the top of my head, but it's uh, it's good good software, and and I really like it. So there's still, I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of probably thousands of tutorial videos on how to do stuff on these programs, and I've only barely scraped the tip of the iceberg. So this is this is the program that I use I know you guys can't really see much I don't know how to share my screen and and film that 
you know, capture what's on my screen. So I'm just using my GoPro, but that's the program that I use is Sony Vegas Movie Studio Platinum 15. And if Hans is watching this video, maybe he can help me figure out how to share my screen. I know he's he's a little bit more technically savvy than I am. Um, I just, I'm not, I don't have that type of brain. My brain is mechanical, so when it comes to electronics, I can turn it on and figure it out, but other than that, it's it's pretty archaic. But that's all I got for this video. I think I've dragged on long enough about camera mounts and video programs and everything else. So that's what I use, and I encourage you guys to all, you know, if if you have the the uh, ability to film and put stuff out there, especially with the antique tractors. I mean. This is, this is the primary way that we can make our hobby grow. This is how we appeal to the younger generations. We have to put it on the internet and get it on social media, you know, do all those things. And I also have Instagram and TikTok and all that, but I don't really, I'm not really big on that stuff. Um, most, of, most of my stuff is through YouTube and Facebook, and, and that's pretty much it. I don't, I don't spend too much time on the other stuff. But anyways... That's enough rambling about electronics. Let's uh, try to shift gears. I know I got a, a live stream coming up that I got to figure out what day I'm going to do it on, but it'll probably be a weekday. But we'll do another tractor talk this month, and I've got some stuff with the John Deere E engine. We've got some updates with Connor Super M from this old farm. So until then, we'll uh, we'll try to keep something rolling. So thanks, guys, and we'll talk to you later.